Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. It's good to be with you. And I'm also joined today, as I always like to be joined, by my really good friend, Phoebe Francis. How are you doing, Phoebe? Warm regards, Graham. And it is a very sunny, bright day here. So great to be here with you. Kind of sunny here too, I think, at the moment. But it's always sunny and bright when we're talking about leadership. Isn't it sunny and bright when we're talking about leadership? Yeah. Yeah, of course. You know, we all are leaders and it is as... You sure? Says, are you sure we're leaders? all leaders? Come on. I'm not. <laughs> we I'm are. Just, I'm just the office boy. I'm not. But we do know, and that's what we're here to talk about today, leadership is everyone's business. So, as the as this slide says, it's with Graham Moore and Phoebe Francis, and I want to share a quote with you right up front. If you look at the business community today, the amount of investment in leadership is going down, not up. Yet the biggest issue we face is leadership, not technical skills. And that quote was made by and reported by Alain Bajani at that stage, 2018, he was CEO of the Majid Alpha Dame Group in the UAE. Here's another quote. His Highness Sheikh Khalifa, the late Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Hayyan, said, everyone has to be a leader in his position. You don't have to be a general manager. You are a leader wherever you are. It's your choice to be a leader. And that came from a quote that uh, was shared with me by His Excellency Faisal Al Naimi, who was chairman of the Abdulaziz Leadership Development Program. And I, when I read that, I said to him, it's really good, Faisal, thank you for sharing that. But I should tell you that Sheikh, Ma Sheikh Khalifa did not come on the Leadership Challenge Workshop. He must have known this already. Yes, he did. Vivi, tell me about these surveys. Yeah, one, one aspect is uh, highlighting uh, this very cr crucial part, uh, especially which, which is in front of us, that is a lot of surveys highlight that 70% of companies indicate their number one lead need is leadership. And why that is, we are going to explore as we yeah. go further. Absolutely. So. Again, I just want to bring uh, the recent incidents which we have uh, uh, due to the rain and we can see a lot of uh, leaders helping each other in the community. Moving over to you. Yeah. Now, that figure that we just saw is, is higher in the Middle East. 61%. Now, it's as high as 81%. And who came up with this figure? Well... Some of you may have heard of the Bosman Consulting Group and in their paper, From Capability to Profitability, Realising the Value of People. 81% of companies say that their need is as, not as high as 81% said that's what their first need is. You don't have to be a superstar or an overachiever to lead. You just have to care about something and do something about it. Anyone who can improve the life of those around him is a leader. Who do you think said that, Phoebe? I think it is His Highness Sheikh Mohammed uh, uh, bin oh Rashid gosh. al Maktoum. Well done, well <laughs> said. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid al Maktoum, Vice President, Prime Minister, and Ruler of Dubai. Anyone, anyone, not a Sheikh, not a managing director, anyone can improve the life of those around him, and they are a leader. So what percentage of companies are seriously worried about their leadership pipeline? Sure, I will admit that this study goes back to 1915, nearly 10 years ago, but I think it's still relevant today. 86% of companies are seriously worried about their leadership pipelines. Ah, Phoebe, tell me about this. What's the average age that managers first get leadership training? Tell me. What do you yeah, think? I, 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 initially, I initially thought that when, when you become a manager, you immediately get a leadership training or managerial uh, training. But, <laughs> but what, what I understood from the statistic is alarming. And that, uh, that so, is something very serious. So do you think it's what, 26 that they get? The, the age is 26 when they get the training? Maybe 23? 
No, 27. no, it, 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 it is double that. So what? let us move into that. 42. So before they, they have 42. They're approaching retirement age. 42, my <laughs> God. So yeah. what, this is 10 years after they probably started supervising people that they get leadership training. Wow. So the 97% of employers think that leadership development should begin by the age of 21. 21. But it's, yeah. it's, for, it's 42. Yeah, my, and my, my, again, my, my personal uh, perspective is, you know, we, we have to start it uh, young, one of the core topic of uh, learning happening in the school should be on sure. the topic of leadership. Uh, that is something which I... Uh, I want to stress at this point of time. Yeah, yeah, and we should. We actually should talk about leadership a lot more than we than we do. Leaders make a difference. I think good people deserve good leadership. The people I manage deserve the best leadership in the world. And that's from Debbie Coleman, board of directors of Synopsis. And that same quote is in the Leadership Challenge. Every edition that it's come out, it's the only quote that's been in every of this, all of the seven editions of the Leadership Challenge book, that particular quote. It's important. All right, think about this. Think about your best leader and your worst leader that you've had. When you think of the worst leader and the best leader on a scale of 0% to 100%, what percent of your talent and energy did your worst leader utilise? And what did your best leader utilize? Phoebe, while people are thinking about it, what do you think? If it happened, I, I, I think about I, I think about the leaders whom I have encountered, and um, what, what, one of the leader who comes to my mind is um, uh, someone who has been a very best leader, and he has uh, given and something about. I will say that, and he has tried to utilize ninety percent of the talent I have. Wow. And help to develop myself. So, yeah. another leader which uh, who has done that is you, Graham, who has been impacting uh, me as an incredible leader, trying to bring the best out of me as an individual. So, thank you to you, Phoebe. Let me make a comment right now. I want every leader, every person, because leadership is everyone's business, to do exactly what you said then. I want them to bring out the best in the people that they lead, and it is not hard to do that. We're going to talk about it now. Let's just get the yeah. average report, though, on this. What did your worst leader utilise? Well, how much did your best leader utilise? So here it is. On the left-hand side, 31.2% on average is what people said that the worst leader brought from them. But the Best leader, as you indicated with your example, 95%, actually 91.95.1, is brought out by that leadership's leader's behaviour. And yeah. I think there will be a, a when we have uh, leaders who are in the other side, the worst leader's bucket, it may be creating the leadership cost also. Uh, of the... course, absolutely, absolutely. So we need more leaders. Good leaders. The question yeah. is: the question is not do leaders make a difference. The question, of course, is yes. How, how do leaders make a positive difference? So we'll explore that as well. Phoebe, you know that in the leadership challenge we have what we call fundamentals of leadership. So I want you to take us through the fundamentals of leadership. Leadership is each of these fundamentals is is prefaced by yeah. leadership is a choice. And an aspiration, you know, it is a choice. We all have choice. It it touches on our individual aspiration, and that is why we call leadership is everyone's business. You choose exactly. You choose. You choose. Everyone's business. Yes. Yeah, and 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 it tries to. Like from when when we, when we say leadership development, it helps to see the self. How can I be better yeah. than a before? So that is what we try to do when we say about leadership development. My self awareness comes in. So do you the think, way in which I interact? Do you think that leadership development is 
personal development as well, self-development? Of course, yes. It touches on the self because it brings in that awareness to that person, how and who they are. Yeah, really good, really good. So even that little ginger tabby cat wants to be a lion and believes that they can be when they look in the mirror. So tell me about this one. And, and yeah, and, and we all can bring and uh, bring and learn about leadership. So uh, that is where, again, we, we stress on leadership is everyone's business and it can be learned. It can be learned and improved or as, as, as we um, learn other subjects and topics. So let, let us see what needs to be done for that. But hang on. And I, I, thought, I thought you had to be born that way. No, no. There is uh, something which, again, I have heard this from you. Are pilots born? Are processors yeah. born? Yeah. Are, are drivers born? Yeah, and they learn. Absolutely. They learn. The same thing with leadership, exactly. Yeah, and it requires, you know, the deliberate practice. You know, it is, it is with us. It is in our hand what yeah. we can do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the other aspect along with that, when we when we develop that self-awareness, it is also something building on the relationship, yep. uh, which which uh, which helps. So one is one aspect is uh, connection before content. You know, when when you are a leader, you are creating that connection between the people in in, yep. uh, in and around you. Yeah, and we can we can see these references with uh, uh, His Highness uh, uh, Father of UAE. Uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Nahyan, as well as we have also seen what His Highness Sheikh Mohammed has uh, highlighted, how we can bring that change through that relationship. Over to you, Graham. Well, this is a quote from Jim Cousins and Barry Posner, the authors of The Leadership Challenge, 40 years research on leadership. And this is their definition. Oh, there we go. I'm glad I mentioned that. There is the sixth edition of The Leadership Challenge. We've got to get you, we've got to get yeah. the seventh edition. The seventh edition is blue, but that's the seventh, sixth edition. This is the art of mobilizing others to want to struggle for shared aspirations. Leadership is not a science, it's an art. It's the way you do it. And this is mobilizing others, not because you have told them to do it, but because they want to struggle for shared aspirations. So, what do you look for? In a leader, what do you look for and admire in someone who whose direction you would willingly follow? So let's look at some of what we call the characteristics of admired leaders. So here we go. There's 20 words there that describe behaviours. So pick some of those, Phoebe, and tell me about them as a leader. Yeah, well, one thing which I look for is honesty. Oh, first, first one on the top. And uh, the other one which uh, which come out for me is, for example, inspiring, you know, the honesty later on inspiring, whether that person inspires me to take an action. And I, I, I have uh, one of my professors in my university who inspires us with uh, positive stories. Yeah, I, I remember, you know, he says that, okay, don't worry about, okay, you scored less about in the marks. Your marks are not determining your life. It is your actions. You know, those those, those words are actually empowering. Very and good. so honesty comes, then comes inspiring. Then another aspect which I think uh, coming to my mind is how can you be competent? How can you learn continuously? So that is how I learned about, you know, the leadership challenge from, <laughs> leadership challenge. Yep. So, you know, these are some things coming to my mind, Graham. Okay, but what about supportive? Don't you want them to be supportive? Don't you want them to be ambitious? What about... Yeah, again, again, maybe uh, if uh, I, I may think caring comes also. Again, when, when you mentioned uh, inspiring, I think there is also an element of caring coming with the inspirational words. Yeah. So let's look at what the surveys consistently show. You are right when you say honesty is a competency. So uh, in characters, uh, uh, um, characteristics of admired leaders, 84% want their leader to be honest. 
Then we've got the yeah. next are competent and inspiring. In this survey, is the, it's they are level, but not always are they exactly the same. And sixty-two percent of people say they want their leader to be forward-looking. Now, those four are the top four for the last forty years. They're not always in that order, except for the top two, which are in this case honest and inspiring. People want their leader to be honest and inspiring. They've always been the top two. Those four have always been the top four. This is what people ask for. So here's a clue. If you want to be a, a, an inspiring leader, go for that. Make sure that you're honest. Make sure that you're co inspiring. Make sure you're competent and forward-looking. When this all comes together, though, we get a little thing called credibility. So on mm. the, let me just explain this, and then I'm going to hand it over to you. On the left-hand side, we're saying honest, competent, inspiring. And the fourth one is forward-looking. When we look at the definition of credibility, honest relates to trustworthiness. Credibility is trustworthy, expertise, and dynamism. Honest, trustworthy, competent, expertise, inspiring, dynamism. So the three of those are the same. Then there's forward-looking. So we say that another word for forward-looking is vision. Vision, someone's forward looking. So we say that leadership is credibility, those three, plus vision. Credibility is so important. In fact, it is the foundation of leadership. The leader must be credible. Why would I follow you? Why would I climb the mountain with you if I don't believe in you? If I don't believe what you're doing? If I don't believe what you're saying? If you don't have credibility, I'm not going to climb the mountain with you. So now, yeah, I, one I, thing, yeah, one thing which I just want to bring in, you know, uh, as you mentioned, uh, credibility. You know, credibility builds trust in the group of people. Absolutely. And and, and as 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 uh, whether it is in a workplace, people look, for example, each other, how credible the people are, and, and it determines <laughs> whether you need to follow that person or not. Yeah, and that then feeds right into the five practices, particularly the first one of exemplary leadership. So tell me about this now, credibility and and uh, trust. How do, they, how do they fit into this? Wow. <laughs> yeah, credibility is modelling the way. You know, I how can I role model? Uh, myself in in my interactions with people uh, how how am i bringing my voice what what whether that voice is honest so yeah. as as you can see uh, in, in uh, displayed here clarify values by finding your voice affirming shared values what are yeah. my values yes am i following those values which i say i have exactly if you identify and talk about your values, you must live those values. Let's move on to the next one, which is... Oh, yeah, the next one. That happened. That jumped ahead. <laughs> I didn't mean that at all. So, Phoebe, the second yeah. of these five practices is this. Yeah. Me. Inspire the shared vision. Here it is, envision the future by imagining exciting and ennobling possibilities. And en enlist others in a common vision by appealing to shared aspiration. Where am I going? As you can show my team, wow, we are going to achieve that. Together. Let us work together. Yes. Yes. For that. Very good. Let's work together for that. The third one is challenge the process as as a leader search for opportunities by seizing the initiative and by looking outward for innovative ways to improve experiment and take risk by constantly generalizing small wins and learning from experience you know challenging what can i do differently in the process and again this leads to innovation in in workplaces you know imagine that if i don't have a um, good leader, as we have seen in the beginning, innovation also take a backseat. So a great leader try to bring in 
new processes so that we iterate and improve on a regular basis. And, and again, recognizing those people for those great contributions. I, I remember an example. Uh, well, maybe well, I just want to yeah, share yeah. a small example uh, in, 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 in uh, experience in an organization where every week we celebrate together and recognize people. This week, so and so have which, achieved. Okay, which practice is that? That you're, we're jumping ahead a little bit. We're jumping ahead. Which practice is that? That is yeah. That so no, 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 that's that <laughs> encourage the heart. So we're going to come to that in a moment. Let's let's yeah, yeah. and you're going to encourage the heart of people who have been challenging the process. But we'll get to that in a moment. But also, when you're challenging, relating to challenge the process, what else are you doing? This is the the fourth practice. Yeah, for practice is enable others to act, foster collaboration by building trust, facilitating relationship, strengthen others by increasing self determination and developing competence. You know, how how can I how can I improve my team? Leaders develop more leaders. Yeah, absolutely. And now I think the, I think this is almost your favorite of the five practices. I think. Man. It is, it is. <laughs> and, you know, encouraging the heart. And um, here it is, incredible Graham Moore, I will always say that, who encourages our heart to do more. So recognize contributions by showing appreciation for individual excellence. Yes. Celebrate yeah. the values. Yeah, I'm sorry, I've jumped ahead. But yes, absolutely. Celebrate the values and victories by creating a spirit of community. So, yeah, we will go through one by one again. Yeah, we will, in to... deep, in depth, a little bit more now. The first one of which you said, of course, was model the way. What is credibility behaviorally? How do you know when you see it? You were talking about how important it was earlier, how important credibility yeah. So how do, you, how do you know it when you see it? And it is very simple. Uh, it is do, say, yeah. do. Ah. <laughs> Yeah. My gosh. So I, it is do what you say you will do. It is, is that what that means? That. Is that what it means? D W Y S Y W D. And I say to people, what does that mean? Oh, I don't. Oh, oh, but usually they get it pretty closely to that. Do what you say you will do. What happens if you do this all the time? What happens? It 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 brings credibility. It is actually the simple explanation of honesty. <laughs> Yeah, which I, I, will credibility. I believe I've always lived my life with that. Even before I knew of these letters, I've always mm. lived my life like that. Uh, my children, for example, knew that I never made a promise to them that I was not going to fulfil. They knew that if I said something, that would happen. Uh, I, I was never going to promise them a holiday in Disneyland if you didn't know, because I knew it wasn't going to happen. Um, but it's the same with my in my relationships personally. And I think it's something that adds, it, it's about character. And it's about who you are, doing what you say you will do. Now, for those people, because this is the Leadership Challenge Middle East, I'm sure that a lot of people who are listening to us and watching us now are of the Muslim faith. Now, I have not put it into this slide pack, but I should and I do sometimes for the programs that I'm presenting in the, in the Middle East, it is in the Quran. Well, not exactly those letters, but there is a shura in the Quran that talks about this. It is the biggest sin that you can commit by not doing what you say you will do. And I'm sure that there are, there are Muslims listening to us or watching us now who will say, yes, Graham, you're right, because a Muslim told me and showed me where it was in the Quran. So do what you say it is really very important. Leadership is personal. Do the people you know, you lead know who you are, what you care about, and why they ought to be following you? What is this? You, you talked about the fundamentals. What was in the fundamentals? What was the one particular one that relates directly to this? Leadership is yeah, a... Yeah, you know... Relationship. Sorry, leadership is yeah. a relationship. Yes, tell me. Yeah, again, uh, as you highlighted it, you know, that the word uh, which is highlighted, what you care about, you know, caring is part of that relationship. And and that is why people start to follow one another. 
Yeah, but they know who I am. They yes. know what and I'm what... like, and when they do that, they they care about. They know what I care about, and they, you know, I'm not I'm not a bl- sh- shaded by by f- falsity. You know, I think you know, and, and we share it together a good understanding of what we are like as individuals, and that's important when we are leaders. In order to become a leader, it's important that I first define my values and my principles. So think about what your values are. And when we're doing a leadership challenge workshop, we spend a lot of time on this so that people can identify what their values are. A good leader takes the time of his or her team on a personal level, but a great leader goes one step further and learns about each other's, each person's personal values, how they build trust and what is core to their motivation and driver. Phoebe, you are going to say. Yeah, I, I was just bringing, you know, the connection before content part. You, you, knowing the people within the team, building relationship helps to get good and great work done. So understanding each other's values is something which uh, we have to give priority. What What are your values? What? And again, we all get upset when the values are being violated by the other party. So understanding the values create that caring atmosphere in the place where we come together. So what happens if I tell you what my values are? Let's say loyalty is a value. Yeah, loyalty is a value of mine. But then you notice that I am not demonstrating loyalty. What does that do? What's the effect? It impacts that person and it check on the honesty element. Which it checks on the seen. credibility. The credibility just sinks. Hang on, he says he's honest. He says he's, he's a team. He's loyal. He's not. So credibility tied up with living your values, being the person that you say you are. So what are the benefits yeah. of shared values? Now, this is about the organization's values as well. It's important that we first understand our own values. That's the first part. Then we look at what the values of the organization are. Sometimes the organization's values may not align with our personal values. So what's likely to happen to me if I'm working in an organization where the values of the organization are not aligned to my values? What's going to happen? Yeah, first thing is uh, that there will be that um, challenge internally for that person. Yeah. With respect to, am, am I the right fit? Yes. In this place. Yes. Am I the right fit? Is this for me? Because it goes against my values. So yeah. I, I can't, you know, and there have been times in my life where there's been a, a conflict in some respects. And I, I move away from that because it's not comfortable for me and I can't work productively. If I'm working in an organization where the values of that organization are closely aligned to mine, I'm going to be far more motivated to achieve. <clears throat> and I am personally successful. I'm more committed to the organization and the stakeholders. I'm more willing to work harder and longer hours. I feel less personal and job stressed and I place greater importance on the organization's goals when my values are aligned to the organization's values. But if they're not, I want to finish the job as soon as I can and get out of here, right? I don't even like the job that I'm doing. Yeah, and one more thing is, uh, which I feel is it, it also impact uh, people uh, in, in bodily because wow. you know that the stress of value yeah. incongruence impact uh, the way in which uh, the body reacts, creating stress, health challenges, etc. So it is something very, very, very crucial, which uh, we have to look into. Good point. Very good point, because it's going to, if it, we know that internally, the way we are responding to things, that it I- impacts on our physical body. There is, we know, a direct mind-body connection and and the fact that things are going on in here, I'm not comfortable with this. I'm not. The, there is a disconnect, and we start to feel stress. We release cortisol. We do. Listen, it's not good. So, great point. Leading by example is more effective by than leading by command. Leading by example, living your values, talking about things that are moving us forward, rather than directive leadership. Don't do it this way. 
Model the way again. Clarify values by finding your voice and affirming shared values. Set the example by aligning actions and shared values. Now the second, well, the second point that I want to make about model the way is at the end of the day, ask yourself what evidence exists that I did what I said I would do, that I made decisions and took actions consistent with my values. So that's a little bit of a a self-coaching suggestion. So be aware at the end of the day, thinking through what happened. So was there evidence that I did what I said I would do? That's it. Made decisions and took actions. Phoebe, tell me. Yeah. Now this is this is a unique uh, accept of uh, leadership challenge. Inspire a shared vision, and. It is applicable in our family life, in our work life, every day, each time. All, <laughs> again, you know, where are we going? And what is in it for you? How can we bring that message to the people with you? That is what we discuss in this part, inspire a shared vision. So and how important is it to have a vision? So we're driving along the road, you're driving, or you're with me. I'm doing 100 and, 159 kilometers an hour, right? Yeah. Driving along, yeah. and we then come across a fog and a little and a, a sign on the road which has got a wiggle to it. So, what does the wiggly sign mean? Do, do, do. The road's like that. What does the fog mean? I mean, we can't see. It so how are you yeah, so, but you're sitting next to me, Phoebe. I'm doing 159 kilometers an hour. Ooh, how do you feel? Yeah, so, so, sometimes the co as a co-passenger, we may not see what is in front of us. So as a leader, it is our responsibility to help and guide our team. This is but, the place but, where we are going. This yeah, but how do you how feel when I'm when I'm driving the car? How do you feel if we come up to this road sign says ooh, and we can't see where we're going? How do you feel? I, I may uh, feel scared. I may feel yeah. confused. I may, I may feel... Yeah. Uh, oh, but Phoebe, I'm a good driver. I'll be safe. I'm a good driver. Don't worry. I'm a good... Bang! Oh, my gosh. Right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what happens when the road, the, the, the fog clears and that we're on a straight yeah. road? What happens where we can see... For, how do we feel? We feel happier. And we feel, wow, this is the, this is a good place to be. This is a great leader who is taking us to a more better place than before. Yeah. So that's because the leader talks about the future, where we're going. Vision yeah. trumps everything. Well, I think almost trumps everything except credibility. <laughs> They're both together. But vision is so important. We need to be talking about where we are going, where I'm taking you. And you, I want to feel really excited about where we are going. Employees who, der who derive meaning and significance from their work reported 1.7%, sorry, 1.7 times higher job satisfaction, and they were 1.4 times more engaged. This is because they know where they're going. They're feeling that the work they're doing has purpose and meaning, and they feel rewarded personally by doing work that is valuable and related to their purpose. They can see where we are going, and that's important. Yes? Yeah, but the, the key aspect, as you highlighted, purpose, what is in it for me, all comes together in that um, process of helping to find the vision. But the leader has to has to have a shared vision. The shared is means that, not because I'm share, telling you about it, but because the vision itself is set out in a way that you, the people who are following me, feel part of where we are going. And in fact, the leader can create a vision with the help of the people who are part of this so that they feel really much a part of this vision of where we are going. Very good. Now, I think this is your second favourite of the five practices. Tell me about challenge. Yeah. Let's go over this again. Yeah, you, you know, uh, the question is, again, I, I like to thank you. What if is something which you always ask us? What if we do that? Yeah. How, how can you be a better than previous day? 
So what, what kind of small changes you can br bring in? So this is what challenging the process look like. And imagine that if we can do that on a regular basis with our team, yeah. what way we can improve the life of our employee, life of our customer. So as you can see here, the key of motivating performance is supporting progress in meaningful work. A quote by Teresa Amabile and Stephen Kramer in the book Progress Principle. And this is related to the opportunity that they have to suggest change. Yeah. Uh, they feel and, 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 it's and, meaningful work for them. Yeah, and, and, and again, you know, imagine that, as you rightly said, when people all are bringing their thoughts in the process to challenge yeah. with the question, what, what if we do like this? What if we do like that? It, it actually creates more ease yeah. for all the stakeholders involved. Search for opportunities by seizing the initiative and looking outward for innovative ways to improve. Innovate. Look out. Look what others are doing. Experiment and take risks by constantly generating small wins and learning from experience. By the way, what happens? Can I make a mistake? What happens if I make a mistake? Did you make a mistake, Graham? What happens when we make a mistake? We learn from experience. So, yeah. This is really, really important. I was at a conference some years ago when the CEO of a company which we uh, producing a product, which we all know, this is called um, uh, WD-40. We all know about WD-40. And this man who was making the presentation said, we don't make mistakes in our company. Really? No, we don't. But you'll hear people calling out from time to time, I just had a learning moment. That's the way they frame it up. We learn from the mistakes and we share with others what's happened so that they learn as well. Learning, looking for new and better ways to do it is the driver so much of where we are going in the future. We wouldn't be having the wonderful things that we do today have in the life that we lead if people had not been challenging the process along the way. We could go right back to Henry Ford and say he challenged the process to invent these cars and produce, mass produce them. He looked, there's so many of these and we need to encourage people who are as part of our team, who we are at whatever level they are at to come up with new, wonderful ideas and ask my favourite question, what if? What if we did this? What if we didn't do this? What if we found a better way? At the end of the day, record your answer to this question. What did I do today to improve so that I'm a better leader than I was yesterday. Yeah, I think that's a really important. What did I do today to improve? It is a call to it is a call to action to all uh, our viewers and also for us. What yeah. did I do today? What to did improve? I do today? And then once you by the way, once you've done it today, do it again tomorrow. Yeah. Enable others to act. Number four. It's all about fostering collaboration and building spirited teams, actively involving others, creating an environment of mutual trust and respect. What's another word we could use to describe this? Uh, uh, again, you know, I, I remember. What's another word to describe this process of, of enabling others to act? Empowerment. That's what we're doing. Empowering. <laughs> yeah. The more we give our power away, the more that they will grow and develop. And, uh, yeah, you don't need to be telling them what to do. Do you know that? I'm sure you know because I talk about this often. When people are challenged, when they are doing things that they are enabled to do, 96% of people say they perform at their best. When they are challenged... Yeah, well yeah, I just want to add something, Graham, here. Like, I'm remembering a um, previous uh, departmental head who asked this question. Uh, what can I do for you today? Tell me. Come out with your ideas. Yeah, yeah. What help do you want from me? Sure. But the other question, turning that another way, is to say, is to say, what is holding you back? in achieving this it's not me right so the leader yeah. what is it that's holding you back it's certainly not me 
which means he is enabling you to do what you need to do. And he's encouraging you to think about what you need to do to achieve that, that outcome. All I did was to help them see their innate potential. The rest the team achieved, I did very little. Uh, that's Jasma Belushi of Head Retail Banking at the Sharjah Islamic Bank. Enable others to act. Strengthen others by increasing their understanding, their self-determination of what they can do. You're helping them to develop confidence to do things that by themselves without you holding their hand all the time. Leaders don't hold hands. They help people. They enable people. They don't hold hands like dad does. Enable uh, action, sorry, enable uh, uh, others to act before every interaction. Ask yourself, what can I do in this moment to make others feel more important, more powerful, more comfortable? What can I do to help them feel better than they think they are? Right? Encourage the heart. This one is Phoebe's favourite. We know that. Yeah. yeah. Encourage you, you to perform know. at your best. Yes. Of course, yes. Of 60% course, yes. of people say they need that to perform at their best. When you get encouragement, does it help you perform at a higher level? When it, is it? Yes. 98% of people say when I get encouragement, it helps me to perform at a higher level. So give it. 98% of people are going to do better because you've said, well done, great job, thanks very much, for instance. This is so easy, yeah. great results. Yeah, and, and it is it is a simple act quite often saying a thank you. Oh, oh. And, and, you know, bit, by the way, on the other hand, managers will say, no, that's their job. They're just doing their job. Sure, but when they do better than just their job, you do, or you even say, thank you for doing your job. Why not? Yeah, I, I, I still have, uh, you know, a, a letter from a, a customer who I served a long time back when I, when I was working in a bank. And I still, he sent me a thank you letter saying that how a simple email helped him, you know. So I keep it as a <laughs> recognition document in my file. So I value that words which he has written and that have too much power, you know. Yeah. And uh, how it fill your hearts. Let me just extend that a little bit further and say to people listening now, yes, emails are really good, but here's one variation on that which is even more powerful, and that is the handwritten note. That mm. is more powerful than an email because the person's taken the trouble to find a pen and get some paper and write it out and present it to you. Emails are great. We've got to find ways to encourage the heart because of the results that we're going to get. We'll talk in workshops. We talk about a range of ways to encourage people, but keep doing it. By the way, do it to your family, do it to your friends, do it to your children, do it to the security guard, do it to the checkout person. Encourage the heart. It's essential to show that each person makes an important contribution and each is doing their best, makes the company a success. Yes. Highest performing leaders. So let's just quickly summarize what attributes that higher performing leaders have, what they do. They are more open and caring. Yes. They express more affection. Yes. They demonstrate more passion. That's what high-performing leaders do. They are more positive and are more grateful and encouraging. These things are not hard to do, right? And you yeah. these this puts you into the category of highest performing leaders. Yes. Yeah, caring, affection, passion, positive, encouraging. Simple things, but simple. Absolutely. It Great make, it, may, it make a high performing leader. Yeah. All of this, you do this and you, you get better results than lower performers. I hope that at the end of the day, I've given my staff or any of the people that I'm in contact with, any of the people I'm in contact with, the feeling that I cared about them. I've got a yeah. personal principle, shall we call it this, and I would like, as we wrap this up, for others to think about this as well because, as you can see, the light's dimming where I am. I want people to think about this and see if you can do this as well. I want people, I've never told you this, Phoebe, but I, I want, my objective is that people will feel better about themselves 
when our interaction has finished than they did when it started. Mm. I want mm. to feel better about themselves at the end or when our interaction, whatever it is, it's a telephone interaction, it's it's a one-on-one, -on -one, whatever, but they feel better about themselves, not about me, but about themselves, than when that interaction started. Work on it, please. Encourage the heart. You got it, got it, got it. You got to do this. Recognize con contributions and celebrate the victories and the values by creating a spirit of community. Just say thank you more often. Simple. Just say thank you. So, in summary, and I'm going to do this really quickly, and you might help me, Phoebe, because we're well over time. There are the five practices one, two, three, four, five. Go, Phoebe. Model, of Model the way. Inspire a shared vision. Challenge the process, enable others to act, encourage the heart. These and again, have been this proven. Is... Yeah, these have been proven over years to lead to exemplary leadership. The more frequently you yeah. show, demonstrate those practices, the more engaged people are in their workplaces. We know that leaders do those five practices, but the problem is they don't do them often enough. All leaders are born. And so are you. So this is where I think we're going to wrap it up right now and say leadership is everyone's business. Would you agree after all that time, Phoebe? Of course, it is everyone's business and it can bring the much needed change. Yeah. And we are here to help you. Really good. And now that lead directly leads me in to say anybody who wants any help there is an email on the Leadership Challenge YouTube channel, an email address. You can contact us. We will discuss with you. We'll talk. But the, another way to, to, um, to help you learn even more is to follow the program that we are doing on the Leadership Challenge channel, the Leadership Challenge Middle East channel, so that you can learn. That's what our objective is, isn't it, Phoebe? We are here yeah. to help you. Yeah, and again, I, I want to take uh, this moment to thank all of you for joining us, listening to us, taking your precious time and spending uh, with us. So thank you. And uh, as uh, Graham mentioned, uh, follow, subscribe, the Leadership Challenge Middle East YouTube channel. Yeah. And in case you want to get in touch, we are. you can reach us through LinkedIn yeah. or other ways. Yeah. Or the email address on the on the YouTube uh, channel. You are already leading. That's the key message. Well, keep doing it. Again, Phoebe, thank you very much for your wonderful contribution today. It is always a pleasure. Thank you very much, thank you, everybody, and thank you particularly, Phoebe.